hope it's still in good shape and everything. Think about the, think about me maybe, the guy that first built the original part of it. 100 years from now, maybe my son and my, his, my grandkids might have a big role to play in it. It's got, it's got to be, it's got to remain in the family. All the, all the government or some big shots would do is ruin it. They, they, they wouldn't be open to the, for the poor people at all. Everything they do is criminal. They're all Luciferians at, at all levels. City, county, state, federal, world. They're all Luciferians. And you can blame God on that. Well, who I am is Jim Bishop, the castle builder. I'm 77 years old. I've been doing this for 53 years, the rock work. Part time, I raise a family, work for a living at the same time, and been through all of it. Been through death and a lot of pain and agony. 88 is the year I put all the glass on top, the tempered glass of the, along the apex of the roof. And I just got up there and, and worked and cried and cried and worked and never broke a piece of glass. Just worked, worked through it. What else can you do? I, I didn't even know what it was going to look like till it started coming together. I had no drawings, I had no visions. But I figured it out just sitting back trying to recuperate from my illnesses and talk with people. I started looking at everything and remembered how, where I, what I did and how I did it. And every rock you see, all this concrete rock, all the iron, all the wood, all the rocks everywhere, I put it all in one time and one time only. I never had to do anything a second time. I didn't have to change anything. It wasn't perfect, but it was all right. And human beings can't do that. We all make mistakes. So literally God built that and I was just a tool. I was 25 when I started, 15 when I bought the property. But it'd been nice if I could have got started when I was about 18, actual castle building. As I worked on this, building a wall around the property, it'll become like a uh, Camelot, I like the real Camelot. And as far as King Arthur goes, I don't care much for kings or presidents, so I'm the, I'm the peon, I'm the castle builder. More honor in it. But I'm like the real Arthur. I'm, I'm, no, I'm real, I'm no fairy tale. Same thing with Robin Hood. Robin Hood took off the uh, rich and give back to the poor of the Sherwood Force. Jim Bishop of the San Isabel Force takes off of everybody and gives back to everybody. So there's a, there's a lot going on here. No, never a moment in time where I wanted to quit. Even, even when people dying and our little boy got killed in the woods playing in 1988, the day after Mother's Day, he was four, and that was really hard on Phoebe. I thought that was gonna kill her. And she did all kinds of things. I can't say enough about her. I'm writing my book now. I don't type, so my son got a computer with uh, voice recognition. And the first 25 pages on the internet is all about Phoebe. The whole documentary could be about Phoebe. She could do anything. She's a wonderful cook. Everything she ate was cooked was real good. She specialized in uh, wedding cakes and birthday cakes. And any, anything, anything people want in a birthday cake, she could make it. I hope at 80 I'll be doing about the same thing. I did a lot today. I got a load of rock. I put three rocks in with the boom truck. And uh, I did about the same thing yesterday. And if I can just do a sum each day, that's all I'm interested in now. Because I just don't, I just don't have it. I don't feel that good, you know? I don't really feel tired, it's just sort of blah. But see, it's gonna change. When I'm not around, my son's gonna probably do more than I did, because he's smarter. He's got his mother smarts, my smarts. So him and his mother turned out to be smart fellers, and I turned out to be a hardworking fart smeller. The biggest one-man project in the world that's open free to everybody, a place for rich and poor alike, where they can come and not be hassled with a lot of rules, regulations, uh, climb all over it, enjoy it, be married here, stuff like that. That's what it is, it's a, an, a tourist attraction, but not a trap. Then one time there was an old bobcat 
killing her turkeys. And I shot the bobcat and it, and it was so old, his teeth were all gone, did it a favor. And she cooked that bobcat into tamales. A dozen bobcat tamales. And there was uh, Kevin and Tammy Fern, they got married up here. We'd have them over supper all the time. And they'd come over that night and feed me the regular like a Thanksgiving meal with, uh, you know, with the, uh, all, everything. Dinner rolls, salad, uh, everything. And the main course was these bobcat tamales. And they kept commenting, boy, that's good, but she wouldn't tell them what it was. And she, when, when they left, she said, you know what you're eating? Bobcat. And they never come back again. <laughs>